The breast milk that the baby sucks is a gift from God through his mother to him. But whether that child will suck for his own growth is his responsibility. Are we together now? Yeah. The best that the mother can do is to make the milk available for the child to grow. And there are all kinds of skills to getting that milk available. But if the child does not engage to eat and take responsibility to eat as many times as his growth will require, do you know that children don't eat three times a day? Babies. It's adults that choose to eat three times a day. Babies don't even fast. Once they are born, they fire eating immediately because at that point, growth is important. There are certain diseases that will affect them if they don't grow. So the assignment is to grow immediately. And the mother knows that her job for at least a year or so will be to feed this child. That's it. Feed and cry and sleep and laugh and wake up and feed largely. But as funny as that sounds, you allow the baby to keep feeding. One day, the baby will try to say, Mommy, Daddy, you see. Funny, but the child is growing. Then one day, he will pronounce it properly. Then one day, he tries to walk and fall, walk and fall, walk and fall, until one day, he runs faster than you. I'm praying for you. Whatever has stopped you from growing, that you, you are just registering week after week in church, but you cannot attest to the fact that you are really growing. I'm praying for you. Let that demonic cancer die from your life. Let it die from your life. That your life will justify the spiritual investments that God is making. Are we together now? I'm not talking of one testimony and another testimony of breakthrough. I'm talking of rising to a point where God can count on you. God can trust you. You are not just in receiving mode alone. You have become a giver by reason of your growth. Hallelujah. That you access grace. You access glory. When there is darkness, God sends you. When there is trouble, he sends you. In your family, he sends you. Across this nation, he sends you. Across the nations of the earth, he sends you. You have so grown spiritually. God can allocate a space for you in his program. And find rest knowing that there is a worthy ambassador there. That under your watch, God's program will not fail. If it's a financial program and he places you there, he knows that the lives he has placed under your care are safe. Because you have mastered the key that keeps the abundance of heaven to you. Listen, before I continue, I'm going to ask you to pray. And this is from the depth of my heart. I came with serious passion tonight. Any area in your life where you know the word of God is not yet working, I'd like you to pray in one minute. Father, open my eyes. Let me know what is wrong. What am I not getting yet? What am I not getting yet? What am I not getting yet? I am understanding scripture but it's not yet delivering the result my finances is still down um, I trust I, I pray that it works but it's not yet working my home is not yet working this is not condemnation this is church it's like the hospital when you go to the hospital you don't tell the doctor what is right with you what is right with you is not what brought you to the hospital you came to the hospital to remedy what is wrong it doesn't mean everything is wrong but when you come to the hospital your the doctor will ask you what is the issue take a minute to pray father I've been at this level of grace for years at this level of grace for months there is no multiplication of grace in my life that means there is tauntedness in my knowing the revelations that are connected to grace walk on me tonight someone pray if you really came to church to pray you really came to church to grow take a minute this version of believer is not bringing great glory to the name of the lord i cry for transition i cry for transition in the spirit I cannot bless the nations this way. I cannot serve his grace to the nations at this level of knowledge. 
at this level of anointing at this level of prosperity at this level of influence Sapali ke parinde ke brakato sala kresta bena ke te baratos. Sabri ke bela ke baratos zafrende ke bela ke baratos. Go ahead and pray. Haggai chapter two and verse nine says, "And the glory of the latter house, the glory of this latter house." He's not just talking about a building. He's talking about you. That this glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. There is such a thing as former. There is such a thing as latter. You should not remain at your former self for a long time, indefinitely without transition. Someone take a minute and pray. You are not wasting your time. Help me, show me mercy. This level of stuntedness in my prayer life. Show me mercy. Apalando coparatos cavrege belenema caparados y atalabos. In Jesus' name I pray. I sense in my spirit to give us two more prayer points. I don't know why the Holy Spirit is moving this way. I'd like you to pray and say every consequence of ignorance in my life because of something I did not know. My life is currently in a phase right now where only God can help me. I'm praying, oh God, that you bring me out of that calamity and remedy my ignorance by light. Go ahead and pray. Something I did not know put me in financial trouble. Something I did not know put me in spiritual trouble. Something I did not know gave demons and spirits an edge over my life even though born again. Something I did not know. Maybe you did not understand the power of relationships and it's brought you a lot of stuntedness and stagnation. Maybe you've not been taught the power of prayer where you came from and you did not engage and it gave Satan an advantage over your life. I'd like you to pray that by mercy God will bring you out of every trouble that ignorance has put you in someone pray every trouble every calamity that ignorance of yesteryears ignorance of yesterday ignorance of yester months have placed me in in the name of Jesus Christ by mercy I come out of it by mercy I come out of it by mercy I come out of it the glory of this latter house, this latter house, this latter house called Joshua Selman, this latter house called Koinonia shall be greater, greater, greater. In Jesus name we pray. Final prayer point and then you will sit down. Look at me. Every level in the spirit demands a certain weight of glory and a certain kind and measure of the anointing. Are we together now? That you are anointed does not mean you are anointed enough for the mountains that stand before you today. Yesterday's grace may not be able to bring down today's mountain. That is the reason why we grow in grace. You are going to cry that the anointing will fall afresh upon you celebrating yesterday's results without growing will only leave you in disappointment father you are doing something new across the globe you are changing people's stories you are people are molting to mightier versions of themselves i cry unto you show me mercy let fire from heaven let a fresh anointing rest upon me rest upon me rest upon me rest upon me that as your spirit is moving from nation to nation, moving from place to place, from believer to believer, empowering men afresh, granting men capacity to produce extraordinary results. Do not leave me behind, oh God. I cry for greater power. Let me host heavier dimensions of your glory. Salina Marantos Cabriga Beleke Paratos Yate. 
Krativa zine melta barasko baranto shabres. Shali baratos ke preti ke belanda crossed. Ibratos savredi na kapranti ke belge baratos ke frige de bele de bosh. Ratela kaparanto savrige bele kaparosh. Alleluia. 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 Let me give us one more prayer request. The Holy Spirit is just placing on my mind a message that I preached while we're having one of our conferences in UK. Revelation chapter 4, 1 and 2. It said, after this, I looked. I preached a message on it. Come up hither, part one. You can get it and listen to it. But I just want to bring out something there. Very profound statement. It says, after this, I looked. And I shared in that teaching how that, as simple as this statement is, it says, after this, you have to examine what the this is. Are we together now? He's saying after this, you have to understand what happened from chapter 1 to chapter 4. There were already mighty strikes in the spirit. I hope you know that before he was even caught up in that vision, it was because the elemental forces had no effect on him. He was already a powerful man. They tried to boil him. Bible history would tell us, but the man would not boil in oil. And he was banished to the Isle of Patmos. And that was where he had a vision. So the guy was not some lukewarm, careless, callous Christian. He was already a spiritual man with proof. Then the Bible says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And then he began to see the description of the seven lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstand, the Bible says he saw one like the son of man. He began to describe Jesus. Then Jesus gave him a mandate to write the letters to the seven churches that were then in Asia Minor, but prophetically representing the universal church, bringing several messages that represent several dispensations. And after that, the Bible now tells us, after this, I looked. This right here you see shows you the power of focus and the humility to press. There are some things that if it happens in your life, you will not have the focus to look again. After the achievement, after the miracles, after the advancement, after the great name, he said, I still looked. Focus. Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for the things that are before me, I press. I press. You are going to pray. Because sometimes what limits us from experiencing the greater glory is not something wrong. It's something God did before in your life. You camp around something he did. A miracle he wrought through you. A level of grace he granted you. And you will not know that he has lifted the bar higher than the dimension that you were. And you will not press for more. But John said, regardless what I had seen, regardless my achievements in the spirit, after this, I looked. It takes humility to look after this it takes passion for God to look after this you're going to pray and say father regardless how you lift me grant me the focus to continue with you that everything that sustains the power to distract me let it die tonight is someone praying for some of us the day you prospered you stopped looking stop looking to Jesus stop looking to the spirit the day you prospered for someone, the day you got a job, the day you got married, the day you got the child you've been waiting for, the day you were promoted, the day you were, you experienced increase. After this, and in spite of this, I still looked. Like you will be looking tonight to that perfect law of liberty, regardless the achievements. I come hungry, I come thirsty, I come desperate. Someone is praying. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More.
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear. In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me, give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily. Remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things. It's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number 3. Take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.